all you heroes, villains, and innocent bystanders, welcome to another episode of An Angel and a Unicorn Comic Book Reviews. I'm Alan the Unicorn, and with me today is my Rat Pack. Why are we going to be the Rat Pack? Why can't you just introduce yourself? Why can't you just go with it? Why I'm you got Terry. a challenge? Remember one of the Rat Pack came, Mohawk Boy. James. Just James. Dalian. Soon to be no Dalian. <laughs> Soon to be zero Dalian. Alright, we will be reviewing the books for the week. Um, so we will be spoiling them, so if you haven't read them, you may want to take a minute, go read them, come back and see us in a little bit. That diamond um, catalog was awesome. I read it, so you know. That's, that's, <laughs> we're going to be here a while. You can just already tell. Um, so, uh, also, if you can, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell so you can be notified of our videos. <laughs> our, our one viewer, viewer, I'm sure, is really interested to see it. Um, so, who wants to go first? You should start, start over there and then work our way back around. Sure. Okay, go for it. Um, first book, I guess I read Harleen, number one. Harleen, mm hmm. And. Anybody else read it? No, not yet. Okay. It's, it's, it's basically a retelling of how Harley meets the Joker and kind of gets into the Joker's world. The story of a young Harlan Quinzel, psychologist, a psychiatrist Psy at Arkham. Yes, psychiatrist yes. at Arkham. So she's starting off, she has this big plan of uh, studying people with these depraved. Uh, Loss of loss of empathy, basically, and so she meets up with some uh, big wigs that could possibly fund her research, and that doesn't go very well. So afterwards, she's like, "Oh, my, my career's already sinking," and uh, her friends trying to console her, and she leaves the bar, and runs into the Joker, and uh, the Joker's committing doing, heist, Joker's yeah. committing a heist, and, you know, doing his thing, and and she's knocked down to the ground, and. And he's got a gun pointing at her, and but he doesn't shoot her. He says he he speaks with her, and so they get in their truck and they're riding off. And they go, well, "Why didn't you shoot her?" And he goes, "Ah, oh, like something in her eye or something yeah. caught my attention or something." And so they're giving him a little bit of ragging on him a little bit. Oh, I didn't know you were so sentimental and all this stuff. And uh, then right about that time, Batman shows up, and um, they hadn't really gotten very far. Batman shows up and uh, stops them and knocks them out of their truck and. Uh, Batman and Joker are fighting, and uh, everybody's kind of getting around, and Harley's there, she's getting around, and she's kind of um, intrigued with the Joker, and they fight, and the Joker gets hauled off to Arkham, and eventually uh, she finds out that somebody that was at there actually was interested in her research, but didn't say anything at the time, but actually left early, and so he's wanting to fund it, and uh, so she starts off on her mission, and she gets going to Arkham, and uh, she's Starting, starting to do her research, and uh, the Joker's starting to get into her mind and stuff, and about that time, uh, Harvey Dent wants to meet up with her and says, we don't want you to be doing this research for his own particular reasons. He didn't think uh, this was going to work, and matter of fact, it, it would backfire in Gotham. And he thinks a lot of people would be use, use this particular research to get off of a lot of stuff for their, their crimes. All the lawyers would come back and say, right, yeah. they would try to do appeals and stuff. And so she continues... Still getting more and more intrigued with the Joker. Tried to put him off at first because she didn't want to get pulled into his. Um, he was always giving her just different lines of stories as he gave all the other psychologists or psychiatrists, and so she finally decides to go meet with the Joker and really try to figure things out. And that's kind of where it leaves that first issue. Um, it it sounds like it wouldn't be interesting, but it is actually a pretty good read. Uh, it's done by Stephen Sedgwick. He does the art. He's done a yeah, the lot art was great. of really good um, uh, books for Image. Um, he has, does have a unique art style. Sounds like he you did. read it as well. I did read it. Yeah, Actually, I read it right before you guys got here and I finished it. I I was I thought it was a retelling. There wasn't but Definitely much. a retelling. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was 64 pages of like yeah, it was, I felt it was like long. it went yeah it went way too far into things that needed didn't need to go into it felt more like they were trying to write a TV show around this instead so of like it was set up yeah it was set up sort of like a TV show I actually and then enjoyed was, some of the of her own personal dialogue yeah but there was the ones that were so in red. much of it like I mean like it was just like it that's all it was was her personal dialogue and it was just there they could have done no I, I didn't I, I didn't get that I. The, I just really, I, well, it sounds like it's a basically it's a retelling of Mad Love, from the animated series that we introduced her into. I didn't it. I didn't see that unfortunately, so I'm not for sure. But okay. I just know that for me it just was it was boring. Like there wasn't much. Like I felt like they just kept going and going. Sixty four pages of her. Of the art's her, pretty though. 
No, I was just the opposite. I I, 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 okay. I wouldn't it's say it's, it's not an exciting read by no. any means. But and I it, thought it was. An, an, but the other thing I think that I think the reason that I. I was a little bit harsher on it is they switched it over to the black label which is supposed to be more of adult right. kind of content and there really wasn't like the only thing they switched is maybe there was more cussing there wasn't yeah, really wasn't anything really... there they couldn't there was nothing in this book they couldn't have done in a regular, in a regular... Book. and so I felt like you switched to this black label there's a you know you should use that kind of you know there, there should be more something I don't I, and I don't even want like be like it should be more violent or it should be like uh, you know more perverse it's just there should have been something that was not I mean, this well, felt like and, a, and we don't know a how teen drama. Is, how this is going to continue to go. It may get more black label ish. Right, but you had 64 pages to figure I think, it out. Yeah, but at because, the same time, they, they've also, maybe after that first their first black label, the uh, the Batman book, they may be shying away from, right, yeah, from getting that. that uh, from but that, I think that's kind of my in-depth. point. That's where I, I think I'm going with that. Is like, if you're not going to use the potential for that, right. you know, you can do it to more adult stories. And like I said, it doesn't have to be like. Perverse or, or just a bit. I mean, like they're they could have moved on with the story a little bit more and went a little bit more into into depth of something else. I mean, but you like, don't need you don't need sixty four pages like, to tell the but, story. But what he's saying though is issue two may delve deeper in and more psychological. I'm not and disagreeing, more, yeah. but you, this is an issue but, one that you should be hooking people. You should be getting people. You should be using this. And as far as like in the art, like I think the art's pretty. But it definitely got a little boring after a while. Like I felt like a lot of the characters looked a lot of the same. They look. He did. I think he also did a Justice League Odyssey, didn't he? He the, may have the space one. And everybody looks very lean and like these. Like it's yeah. A lot of the figures were yeah. lean and stuff, but I didn't. I didn't. Very uh, manga. I felt like it was a very like manga esque kind I of. I never art. felt like I couldn't differentiate one character from no, the other. No. Wow. I don't. I don't. I'm. And there were some really nice, pretty panels in there, pretty colors. But it, it was just, kind of a drama that may be leading yeah. up to a thriller. Yeah. You know, uh, and maybe a little bit more of a psychological thriller. But this first issue was just that drama. Yeah. And nice. I, I guess it was psychological in her head, I guess, to a degree. Right. But it wasn't really in-depth psychology. I just wanted more. I guess I was wanting more from the book. You know, you, you, they, especially with a Harley Quinn book, or you know, that there's so much stuff that you can do with her and it just it felt flat for me it felt like it was a little bit more trying to be dramatic and it just never got to anywhere so I was just a little bored with it I, I wanted more from it and I just didn't get it to and, I, and I kind of felt the opposite I felt it was a, a easy read even though it was 60 pages uh, I thought it was interesting like I said nothing not, not thrilling or anything uh, just a drama basically I thought you got a little bit of in depth within her mind and the way she was thinking and and the way the Joker was uh, kept being uh, entangled in her own head, and she couldn't get rid of him, and was becoming obsessed with him, it was it was a good read. So I mean, so I guess between the two of us, I guess you just have to decide, you know. Yeah, which you, you've seen, you probably haven't heard too many of my reviews, but you've heard his. So if you don't like him on most of his reviews, <laughs> then you might want to read. You it. Stick with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what would you rate it? On a Unicorn of one to five, yeah, uh, probably a mob. Yeah, <laughs> no, um, I, I would say a fuchsia. three and a half. Yeah. I'd say, but I'd say maybe a three. Like I would give it a middle of the road. I wouldn't quite give it a four or five, but a three and yeah. a half. All right, James, you're up. My first book is Strike Force by Marvel. It's by uh, Teeny Howard. German, Germain Peralta, and Jordi Belair. Um, it's uh, hey, yeah. Did, <laughs> that, that did, yeah I, did anybody else read it? <laughs> no. Did I you not. read it? It I sounds did. like it sounds like. I mean, I, this is like my second time being here, but it sounds like maybe. You should have at least two people read one of the books so you can have a little bit of discourse back and forth. That was kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, it just depends. Like, sometimes it just really depends on our, our time frames. And, sure. Like, everybody. So anyway, back to the book. Yeah, I read, like, 24 books this week. So. Wow. So... <laughs> did you read Batgirl 39? No, I did not. Oh, darn. I dropped Batgirl. Anyway, oh. guys, guys, he's talking. We're, we're waiting. Wait, are, you, are you ready now, James? <laughs> So and go. It starts with uh, a group of people all uh, downing various uh, level four uh, uh, 
contagious diseases, uh, Ebola, Hantavirus, stuff like that. Run of the mill. And then they lock down the facility and the Avengers are called in. Um, dun, dun, dun. The uh, Avengers are sweeping the facility and... Um, Dang. one, James. <laughs> and, uh, they... She-Hulk breathes in some of the infected air and freaks out, and she finds this, uh, uh, group of heroes. It's Monica Rambo, Angela, Winter Soldier, Spider-Woman, and Wiccan. And they're kind of standing there like, we don't know why we're here, and everybody thinks that they stole the... Yeah, it's like, hi guys! Yeah, they... <laughs> yeah, it, they think they stole the, uh, um... Disease. The diseases and released them. Um, so they've got them locked up, uh... And somebody suggests they call Doctor Strange in, and they said, well, no, I called in another specialist, and Blade shows up, and he comes in and is super mysterious, and like, turns off all the cameras, and teleports them away, because something's going on and they can't understand it. And, and That's interesting. He's, Blade is the specialist. He's, uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I would have thought maybe Brother Voodoo or something. Wait for it. It gets weirder. Okay. He's, uh... He's fought these kind of creatures before and they're sort of pseudo shapeshifters. Yeah. But they, like... <laughs> like, they grab a hold of somebody and then they can act like them and but only like as they have like if they have them yeah it, it, I didn't fully get all of the gist of it you weren't alone so they uh, so then they teleport um, to the temple of the Vishanti where uh, um one of my favorite graphic novels happened where Doctor Doom and Doctor Strange duked it out to see who'd be the the next uh, Sorcerer Supreme. Dun, 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 dun. Um, he didn't like this. Blade uh, talks about fighting these things and their 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 spore and that they were. It was. They said, well, why, "How come we're not bringing the Avengers in?" And basically, Blade was like, "Well, these things kept me up at night. You don't want to keep Iron Man up at night, so that's why we're not telling him." I was like, it's what makes perfect sense. So they, uh, hmm. <laughs> so they're talking about that Doctor Doom fought someone here, and then Doctor Doom shows up. And Angela attacks him and kills him, and they realize he's one of these creatures. And they say, well, these creatures can only imitate you if they have you, so they've got Dr. Doom. And then they're all like, if they're tough enough to get Dr. Doom, we're, what are we going to do? We're the B-team. And, um, and then they figure out that they're some kind of... They're related to the... Uh, War of the Realms mm -hmm. and the the Black Rainbow Bridge. Uh, I didn't read that, so I'm a little lost as to what that is. But I'm assuming they broke the black the Black yes, Rainbow Bridge, and these creatures are stuck here on our planet. They're from Sniffin Farm. Sniffin Farm. Same time. Yeah. I thought I got rid of that. I took penicillin. What was what's the name of the... Uh, Svetenhelm. Svetenhelm, thank you. Something like that. Something to that effect. So, um... I have to find it. Uh... And various... 
like the the Winter Soldier's bullets are work better on these creatures than other more powerful things. And they're trying to figure out why. And he said, uh, uh, they take over your life. No one wants my life. Because no one has suffered as he has suffered. And so then they meet the king of the, or king or queen of these things. And, and there's some threats. And, and then fighting. there's fighting. Yeah. And there's a shield. And there's, there's uh, magic going off wrong, and then Damon Hellstrom shows up, and they stab him, and then uh, Blade gets a call um, that Satana, who's Hellstrom's brother, has showed up, and he's weird right after... Blade stabbed him thinking he was one of these creatures. His sister. Okay. <laughs> it. <laughs> Satana is Damien's sister. Yeah, it's. What up? You said it was his brother. Her, her brother. Her brother. Her brother. Okay. So it sounds like you're really intrigued by this book and really into it. <laughs> it's yet another book with, you know, we've got this. This awful enemy that no one's ever seen before, that only certain kind of people can fight, and we have to get a special team that's willing to get things done, that's willing to work on this certain level. And so it's it's been done. So just another team book where they're just throwing these these so characters, the these B team characters yeah. into it. Yeah. It wasn't even it good. Is, it's the Avengers version of X Force, which is X Force is going to be their Black Ops group. So I think this is going to be like their, the Avengers Black Ops. They've group. been they they've tried they've gone down this road. Oh, yeah. I'm sure multiple, they have. multiple. Yeah. Multiple. Oh yeah. No, I just yeah. don't. Even, but I don't even think like I didn't even think the premise was so convoluted. There was just like like you said like it was half the time you're like I don't even know why why is Blade the specialist like yeah, what is yeah, like yeah. it but he's fought them before but it was it was really yeah, confusing. But, but what's really like, cool though is when they. Blade, Blade's explaining that he's fought him before. He's in the afro. Yes, he's in the afro in the green jacket. He's like, yeah, I, I agree. Yes. I thought that was pretty cool. But even was that he, was like was weird. He not in the afro before or something? No, he was no, in the black was, leather no, with his like, he was, was, he, he was Wesley tight. Snipes. Yeah. Wesley Snipes, yeah. And then he was afro guy in the green yeah. jacket yeah. in the flashback. <laughs> yeah, the flashback yeah. was like him. And but I mean, he's oh, straight wait. Wesley yeah, Snipes. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. straight Wesley Snipes yeah. in the yeah. current time. Okay, I see. But I mean, like I, I, the sad part is I really like a lot of these people. Like I really like Spider Woman. I really like Spectrum. I really right. like Hellstrom. You know, I like these characters. But like this, I don't know why they put this together. Like it makes no sense. And I, I don't. It the, sounds the, like the villain was really weird. Like because they kept making like a shape shifting thing, but then it wasn't. And then it's like they take over. It's just a really kind of, yeah. They were trying to explain it way too much. Well, and then they and the, what? What was the virus stuff? What did any of that had to do with this? There again, I think that'll show up in the next and couple issues. But I don't. But I yeah, just don't understand. But will that. I show up in the next couple issues? No. You know, if I paid three ninety nine for it, so. I would be pissed. I thought I, I would be it. pissed, but I just wasn't like I wouldn't get a second I, issue. I, anymore I, though, as comic books getting raised up in prices, uh, three ninety nine, yeah. I'd be kind of pissed. Like like, it, like you said, I like the, a lot of the characters there. I thought... And the art know, wasn't too bad. Like, no, the, art was the art was okay. Yeah, I mean, you can throw good. a team together, but man, if you can't, you don't have a story to uh, to push those characters right. through it. It just... It's, yeah. it's going to fall flat. Yeah. yeah, I agree. They either... They That's either like, needed to explain more, or ironically, they need to explain less. Yeah. If right. they had explained less, maybe... They, you know, here's this threat, and we don't really understand yeah. it. Well... And then that they're that they're faking out the Avenger that nobody thinks that that's a bad idea yeah. to that you're you're in custody of the Avengers and you just disappear and that's not going to be a omega oh, level event and well like so like they just did the the newest book was um, 
Agents of Wakanda, mm-hmm. but they kind of introduced them in in the, in the Avengers, Avengers series. Book, right. So I feel like it, the logic behind them is a lot better, mm-hmm. you know, for this new series. As this one's just coming, it came came yeah, out of the field. There's boom, this weird there villain, like that, that's convoluted yeah, excuse. Like they're scrolls, well, and they've scrolls, got all these like, the the yeah. power levels are yeah. all. I mean, you've got. It sounds yeah, like this Spider the Woman, that... who's she's not super powerful. She's like a Wiccan level. can like alter reality. Yeah. And Angela, Angela, Angela's like, like Thor's, yeah. Yeah. Bro- you know, your Thor's power sister, levels yeah. are all over the map. Yeah. And- I, I, so, what would you rate it? I'm sorry, yeah. I, I usually don't like it when they just throw the team into the story and just just start going. Yeah. I like to be introduced into these characters, and they might do that in the second issue. I don't maybe. know. I, I don't know how this ends. I just think it would have worked better if, like, maybe this villain, either the villain or the team, was actually introduced in a different book. <laughs> And then they're like, this is why we're or doing this. Or six books in, you yeah. finally get the sixth character. Yeah. You know, the first book is why, why Blade yeah. is after these guys. And then he meets up with Monica Rambeau because yeah. she can make yeah. sunlight. And then, well, well and we're going to need somebody yeah. who can do stealth. Yeah, well, that's so and so. Well, I know that the Blade is on the Avengers team. And he's yeah, been doing. And so it's. Still don't work the way it's no, no, I know, but it's just, I mean, yeah. So what would you rate it? I'd give it like a two. Yeah, I would agree. Two out of five, probably. I, would, I, mean, I read it, and I... I, I, I knowing, wanted knowing to new, like Knowing it, Marvel I, now, it'll be done in six issues. They'll cancel it, it won't make it six issues. I'd give it a two. Yeah. Maybe two and a half, because... Yeah, that, that's another thing, is these kind of books, they... They have lofty goals, and they rarely do you, yeah. do you get paid off. Marvel. All right, we have to keep going before uh, Dow no, here falls asleep. Okay. No. <laughs> He's about to pass out. No, I'm not. Uh, well, one of the books I picked up... I, no, we're going we're gonna to make this live. We're going to shave your head on, on video if you don't keep it up. If you, I don't, if you, you, know, if you keep it up. If you keep it up. Oh, Sorry. I can keep it up. We're not going that way. Um... One of the books I read was Avengers Loki Unleashed. It was a one shot they did. It was uh, Roger Roger Stern came back and wrote it, and he wrote some of the, a lot of the great Avenger stories in the past. Uh, you got Ron Lim doing the art, so it's been really good. It's actually set set uh, after the events of Avengers two seven uh, two seventy seven, which I think would have been the fall of the Avengers under siege when the uh, Masters of Evil destroyed the uh, Avengers Mansion. Mm-hmm. So it picks up after that. So um, real current. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make me hurt you. I mean, real current. He's making fun of it. He's know, like, oh my yeah, gosh! Set between that. Down. Time. Keep going. Yeah. And you know, Loki. Fuck. Got you know he's being he, Loki. He, he's Loki being Loki. He's Loki. You know, he, he's he's he's, Loki. He's, he's brooding. Shut the hell up. <laughs> he's Loki. All right, that was a good book. Give, I give it a three. Next. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, <laughs> he's... Term Logan, though. <laughs> I, do, I don't disagree with this. I missed something in that. He's, he's brooding. He's like, oh, I've been beat, blah, 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 by the Avengers and everything. And so he's trying to find something new to do and uh, ends up finding this world that you know, he's going to try to take over and try to become more omni- omnipotent. Omnipotent. Omnipotent, yes. Um, and you've got you know the looking over the Avengers mansion. The Avengers are the that you know kind of deals with that and kind of seeing what's left there and everything. Got Tony Stark in his disco outfit, kind of looking you know Saturday Night Live or Saturday Night Fever. I, I really like this. I like the I like the old retro stuff. Oh yeah, so do I. That's why I was like pick it up. I was like oh cool. Um, ends up you know they end up going to this planet, uh, Yon, to fight. Uh, Loki, he's trying to fight this other being, godly being, and the Living Tribunal comes. Doctor Strange comes. Um, <laughs> they get together for a party. Huh? They get together for a party, yeah. And it's living, and it's got it's got your your girl Spectrum in it. Back when she was going as Captain yeah. Marvel. Marvel. Um, and I I enjoyed it. You get the I'm old classic silver centurion centurion uh, red and red and silver Iron Man costume. Oh, yeah, yeah. armor. Um, 
you know, Doctor Strange helps him. It's the the planet. It, the guy uh, is called uh, Sisnig. So far, this book is not being spoiled. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> and so he and Loki you know what fight. Against you, huh? Huh? Yeah, I was just telling you the planet Yan and Sisnig, and Loki and him fight. The Avengers kind of help him help you know defeat Loki and. So is it a one shot or is it? Yeah, a just a one shot. So oh. basically, okay. So it's all self contained. The gist of it is. Loki wants more power, so he's trying to right. battle this Basically, planet, and they typical, go to stop Loki from right. trying to yeah. be the ruler of this planet. Why, why didn't you do that? Did you feel that? Did you do you want to interject that in me? And, huh? So what? Wait, wait. What would you rate it? I give it a three, three and a half. Uh, Ron Lynn's art's real good. Stern's a good writer. So. I, he hasn't done anything in a long time. Last He's been doing I, covers. I know a lot. Has he? Yeah. So. Last time I, I think I last time I read Ron Lynn was like X Men two thousand ninety nine. It's been a while. Bit of walls. He's been yeah. doing another thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it. It's good one shot. It's kind of a good little throwback, kind of back to those old days. Not having to it took more time to read the comic than it than it does now. So that's true. All right, so I'm going to do Infested Earth. It's by David Miles Golding, um, and it is DGC Studios. So it's kind of like an independent. Um, I don't think I've ever heard of the studio, and I'm assuming it's kind of his studio since it looks like kind of like initials. Yeah. I'm assuming of some kind. It's his called Infested Earth. Infested Earth, um, by Dave Golden. Did you say it was by? I mean, what company put it out? Um, DGC Studios. Not familiar with it. Yeah, me neither. Dave Golden Studios. So I'm assuming it's Dave probably Golden his stuff. Golden Comics yeah. Studios. Yeah. yeah. I mean. Any way you slice it, this book was actually pretty good. I was really, really, yeah, I was really impressed. The art's pretty decent. It's not, it's kind of got like a little bit of a old time cartoony look to it, or not cartoony, but superhero esque look to it, but it's not, it's kind of a little more realistic looking. Um, but it starts off with these people, they're arguing in a comic book store, and all of a sudden one of the superheroes uh, falls through the, the windshield or wind, uh, window of the shop. And he's just eaten alive, and like his body's like boiling and dying, and they're like, "What's going on?" And the guy's like trying to look out the window, and the 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 counter lady's like, "No, get back in here!" And the next thing you know, like there's blood everywhere. Then they skip to a, a months later, and all of a sudden everything's like destroyed. The buildings, there's like planes and buildings, and the buildings all look like in shambles, and everything looks like it's the, just the wrecked. comic book shop. Everything's gone. Like that whole tent, that whole city's gone. Wow, like I was, I was really concerned when he first fell through the window about the comic books. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's really kind of funny because they wow. they're arguing like the whole time like the there's comic book guys like they're arguing about like a superhero and they're like oh he's not really that good and he's like and the other guy's like no he's my favorite and they just kind of go on this like wild banter so it has a really good comic book feel except for there's like a hot chick at the counter which that never happens so but it was actually yeah I was very sad when everything got destroyed it's, it's very sad. So they cut to six months later where all of a sudden this a, um, a portal appears and it's this uh, female superhero on uh, getting hit by a truck. And there's like these luch- these guys in luchador masks. They're robbing this truck. It looks like an armored car. Um, and she's trying to stop them. Finally, she's, she, uh, she, they crash. And she, gets, uh, the, she sees that one of the guys in the back is dead and the other guy's leg is broken. So she helps him set it and is like, I don't know where we're at. You know, I don't know what happened. And so she starts looking around the whole city, trying to figure out what's, like, is she, and she goes through all this. She's like, are we on a different Earth? Did I transport to a different timeline? You know, she starts going through all the comic book trope stuff that, that could be happening. Um, and while she's looking around, all of a sudden, the uh, guy that she saved and helped with his leg um, ends up, this thing, creature, shows up and eats him. Uh, and so she's walking around trying to find things, and all of a sudden she finds this big ne- nest of bones, and this, uh, like, Flash-type superhero grabs her and picks her up. And he's like, okay, look, we're going to get this over really fast. You're in an alternate world. I'm trying to save you. Uh, you know, like, d- I'll tell you later. And so all of a sudden, she's like, I- this isn't working. You know, she's like, stop. She's, he's going too fast. And she has a sonic scream, so she kind of knocks him off his feet. And he's like, why did you do that? Now you're, and like, now you're giving us. And he's like, look, we got to go. We don't have time for this. And, all- and then all of a sudden, this big, giant bug claw goes through his brain. So... The bugs show up, she's fighting, she's trying to save, her, save herself and her life, and then all of a sudden all the superheroes that, that are left in this world come and they start fighting all the, the uh, bugs, and they're getting, you know, they kind of have a, a, 
uh, front that they're putting on. You know, like, okay, you do this, you do that. And so they're all trying to save her, and she gets stabbed in the she gets stabbed in the eye. And so they like pull out the stinger and have to like uh, administer an antitoxin to her. And they finally they lose one of their uh, one of their own. One of their own dies, and so he's like really mad at the leader's kind of mad at her. He's like, you know, we lost two people because of you because you you know you you're busy fighting us. So he brings her, he brings her to, like, the kind of safety, and he's like, we gotta check you and make sure you're not infested, and then it cuts to the end. So, apparently this bug infestation is, like, destroyed this entire world with all these superheroes. Yeah, he kind of lost me around the bug infestation. Well, that's what right. the whole point is, is, like, it's infested, so it's, like, destroyed everything, it's destroyed all these heroes. You don't really know what it is until later on, you kind of realize that these bugs are the ones that are kind of, uh, and that's what they, they talk as, as they go along, they're kind of talking... They kind of explain a little bit more and more as you keep going along the story. It really worked really well. I may not be explaining it well, but it really it did work. sounds interesting, though. It did work really well, and I was actually kind of surprised. It was kind of an interesting, fun premise. It's kind of like aliens they talk about versus superheroes. How they got sent to the other not Earth. Yet. It's like she just, she just happened, and I think that's what they're going to like. They made it interesting. They give you enough, and, and yeah. yeah, like she's like. Oh, yeah, you don't even know if she's gonna survive because at the well, end of the book is it she's her like her Earth or is it you know is there a no is she's there a fixed Earth are, to go home yeah. to or yeah. they, you're gonna do, get the second yeah. issue to read sir. and then I mean like the, when she when the like the Flash type hero grabs her he kind of like tries to like he tries to give her the quick rundown he's like look we you know we ain't got time we got to get out of here because he's trying to get her out of the city to you know get her to safety and she's like she's not having it you know of course there's, she's like I'm not I can save myself and. The next thing you know, she's dying, and then... It was just... It was really interesting, and the it's heroes are really weird. Actually, like, the heroes, there's one hero that's, like, uh, the guy's made out of balloons. Looks like a balloon animal, but he's, like, it's a person. And he, like, he's, like, super strong, so, like, the... the um, one of the bugs, like, shoots acid at him, and so he, like, jumps in front of the, one of the girls and saves him, saves her, and, like, it, it's just really interesting. Like, there's a... Some of the powers are kind of interesting, so... I'm, I'm curious to see how it's going to go. I was like, I was really excited. It was actually kind of a fun action book, and didn't... Ex- it gave you enough... We've talked about it before. It gave you enough to keep going, but it didn't tell you everything, so that so you... So, you, it kind of hooked you a little bit. Right, it gave you right. Enough to hook to like you said, like, I want... Now I want to know what Earth she's from. Is yeah. she, she going to survive? Like, what? how did these aliens get here? Like, I want to know what's going on. Like, this makes me interested... But it didn't, like, it wasn't boring and dramatic. There's some books that you have all these questions and you feel like you're lost. And there's some books that you have all these questions, and but they the book lets you know we don't expect you to know yeah, all these things exactly. yet. Like, I didn't feel so like I had a very fine line. Yes, I don't disagree. Strike Force. Especially, yeah, Strike Force was just too it's much. like, you should have already known yeah, all this stuff. Strike Force didn't give you the hook. No, it didn't this apparently, the hook. Well, Strike Alan Force is like... Well, you know all this stuff already. Yeah. No. Yeah. So this, I really liked it. I, I give it a four out of five unicorn horns. The art, like I said, the art was wow. really interesting. The super, the heroes were really interesting. The kind of like this aliens versus superheroes kind of concept is kind of interesting. Like I, I want to know more, and I I want to I want to see why all this stuff is 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 okay. happened. So okay. I really liked it. Back to you. Hopefully, well, we still have time to do more, or did we yeah, we can go one more round. All right, uh, Bad Girl. What Bad Girl was it? I read this from 39? 39, 39, 39, yeah. 38, 39. I, I've been keeping reading Bad Girl more than most people have, but I'm kind of getting to that point as well. This issue was sort of a non issue, really. Um, it just kind of went over some stuff that kind of has happened in the past. Oracle is now sort of her own entity, uh, the computer being of Oracle, and she feels that Babs basically has abandoned her, and she's left her own devices and Babs is actually trying to figure out some computer stuff and figure out what happened to the program that she had uploaded all this stuff into. Meanwhile she's doing some stuff in her real life and uh, there's this community called the Burnside that she's uh, doing some stuff with and um, uh, Oracle wanted to get her attention and basically at the end of it blows up Burnside. Yeah. So it looks like. That was basically the gist of the book. That was it that quick. There, it was it was a non-issue almost. Yeah. It takes you less than five minutes to read it, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit more in there, but it really right, wasn't right, yeah. important or exciting or interesting. Who's doing the art? I don't Is remember. Is it Paul Pelletier still? I think so. I, think so. I, I love his art, though. The, yeah, the art's fine. The art's great. But it's just, yeah. the story, just for a long time, really hadn't been 
popping. So. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree. They've done so much stuff with her, and I just. I really liked the Stephanie one that they were doing, where she was kind of a mentor, and they were kind of. Mm-hmm. But anyways, you need to hear it in there. Yep. So what would you rate it? Uh, two and a half, maybe. I guess. That is right. Yeah. James, my next. You one. sure you don't want the uh, sound effects? Okay. <laughs> okay. Hard pass. Check. Unsubscribe. Though Dal's allowed to do some since I wouldn't stop you. Know, so. It's uh, Knights Temporal by uh, Cullen Bunn and Fran. Oh yeah, I want to read this book. Galan, Galane. I like Cullen Bunn's work. Um, it's by Aftershock Comics. This is. <laughs> I sadly can't help you on this one. Like I didn't read this. We're. Uh, I gave up on it last. But issue. he does tend to write. I just want to, in his defense, write more horror better than his superhero stuff. And I, I, I don't think this is more. Uh, it's it's not. It's like a. It's like a what King Arthur. Arthurian type thing. No. It's like, but it's like no. through time. It's okay. not like. So sorry. The first book. This kind of. He's not really a knight, but a. Knight in training? Protector of the crown. Well, he's not in armor. I mean, he's more like... A soldier. Like yeah. Jon Snow level armor right. type things. You know, not the metal stuff. But he's chasing someone into the woods. And uh, the, the someone that he's chasing is like a sorcerer or a necromancer. And... Uh, and then it cuts to kind of a modern time, and he's met this mysterious girl that has, um, she's with him along the way, and she's she's super mysterious and won't ever, she'll, you know, there'll be ten facts and she'll tell him two, and, and then makes him wait on the rest so this one starts out um and it keeps jumping through time it's there um it gets really the, yeah there's yeah. like 10 different time periods that it's in. Uh, he he goes through yeah the, yeah. the, the, the couple the, did you read it i, thought you did I didn't read this issue oh. but i just like You've the read. concept okay. yeah i've read the first two so in this one so it looks like he was in a cavalry charge with like some red coats and he notices that his group got decimated by the artillery and he goes to her and he said, "Well, the bad guys were in my group. I thought we were we were chasing the bad guys. The bad guys were next to us. He says, and we got wiped out by artillery. And the Jane gal's like, see, they're dead. I promised you they'd be dead. I didn't say how. And, uh... <laughs> Sounds like so, a Terry answer. Yeah, so... <laughs> she, <does. laughs> she related to Terry French. And he, uh... He's, like, had enough. And he runs her through. And kills her. And then it jumps to modern time, and they have picked up this gal that worked in a like a bookstore, I think. Uh, she was in the second issue. And they they grab this gal, um, and they're not telling her very much either. I don't really know why she's with them, other than maybe as a a way to explain things to the reader. Yeah. What's going on here? Well, let me tell you. Yeah. And that the this sorcerer is sending homunculus against them. Um or homunculi. Homunculi. And uh It's like a zombie. A uh, yeah, created a created monster. Yeah, like a golem. In a yeah. So, um, and she's like, well, how, you know, you guys are chasing this sorcerer. What does he want? 
and they all just sort of look at her and she's like are you kidding me you never asked this guy why he was doing any of this stuff he just is like he's got to go <laughs> and uh <laughs> he's the worst thing ever why i don't know i don't, I don't, I don't know. Know. We just i, I just, just you know we were and so then they uh they show that in this one and in the previous one they show that the soldier and the sorcerer have kind of teamed up at the end and that the the soldier's wanting to die and he's wanting the sorcerer's help in doing this whereas before he wanted the sorcerer dead so and then they go to a pawn shop and the guy that runs the pawn shop it's is like is like a he's more than he seems that he can connect him to the powers that be that are doing this to him and he goes and questions them and they're kind of dismissive and uh, so then an older version of himself shows up and starts beating the crap out of him and says here just let me kill you had he been loking around yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the younger around. version can't hurt the older version when the younger version hurts the older version, he hurts himself and heals the older version. This is way too complex. Yeah. <laughs> and. I'm glad you're spoiling at the, it. At, yeah, yeah, it's like, I don't even at know. At the end, I mean. he's getting ready to. Uh, he's telling the, the girl that's with him that the guy ran through earlier. Uh, you know, I'm doing you a favor and uh, I'm going to kill my younger self and it'll be a favor to all of us. Damn. It's So we were talking about the fine line between telling too much and not telling yeah. enough. We're three issues in and I'm more lost than ever. Yeah. So well, that's why I gave up on issue two. I do a quick look at uh, the art in your in your pad there as you're uh, reviewing it. Uh, the art looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. It can it can be interesting. It's, like this, yeah. It's. I didn't see it real well, so I just it looks like. It. If that's what you're going for, but it it's a, it is easy to tell people apart. You know, you see this guy at different t points in the timeline. You know it's the same guy, but I've seen better art. So what did you rank this book as? I give it like a two. Is this the first book of that series you've read? Mm -mm. I, I read the... the I read all three this week. Um, and I just <laughs> don't know that I'm going to read number four. Yeah, I so read, you I read the first. Two I wanted to read it. It sounded interesting. Well, I think I didn't want to jump in. Yeah. I don't like to jump right. in at issue three. If I'm lost, it's because I read the whole book and I'm yes. lost, not because I jumped in in the middle. So because issue three came out this week, you had to suffer through <laughs> one and two to get to three. Well, I had to. I was have trying, to research, man. Well, I was trying. To, Welcome to the show. I was trying to pick something that other people weren't going to pick that I had. I was like, that oh, sounds interesting, and it came out this week, and I probably should read the first two to get caught up, and that was... Sucked. <laughs> what wild. a great... It... All right, Dad. Yeah, so, kick it off. Wow. Um, I'm kind of going out of my comfort zone a little bit on one. Um, oh, I'm doing a Graham's Fairy Tale, uh, The Bridgewater Triangle. It's set... Uh, Grimm's Tales of Terror. Yeah. Um, I believe it's in an area in New York. Uh, it has like the Jersey Devil and different myths and everything. And, this, and in typical trope, you know, this group of kids are going to go, you know, search. They're going to go uh, this swamp area and 
going to camp out there because this one guy knows all about this stuff that, you know, this is the locations of, of uh, you know, swamp bees, probably, and, and all these different uh, things, and they end up stopping at this diner that, uh, to eat breakfast, and the la the waitress there is the main, is the main character from Grim Fairy Tales Terror, uh, only as a waitress, and she's like talking to this guy, this know-it-all guy who's nerdy, and they're, they're bantering back and forth about what's all there, and these other couples are with them, and they just want to go quick to have tent sex, you know, and everything, and it's just it sounds like a typical uh, horror movie. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. like Jason, you don't go to yeah, the woods. Yeah, yeah. Don't go to you the don't woods. Don't have sex don't in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. You don't stay in a tent. Yeah. You, you, you take the gal to the yeah. woods so she'll be scared and yeah. she'll cling next to you, yeah. and then that leads to um, you dead. dead. Yeah. And it talks about the little like sprites in the in the woods and everything and different things and so. Uh, and it shows later that they get to the spot that they were, were looking kind of the swamp area, and they're going to stop and camp there. And uh, you kind of see it at night that you know one this one couple's trying to get intimate while well, they hear the sounds of the other couple being intimate, and they're like, "Let's go!" Or I guess daytime. Uh, so they go off exploring, and bad things happen, and so. Did they all die? Well, Teenage pregnancy. Bad, two, of, two, of or, them, or, two of them end up. Or end up. throw a cut bag. <laughs> no, it's like just. Are they going to the doctors trying to get the morning after pill? No, or um, like, two of them get attacked and uh, it kind of ends with them, them uh, sinking in quicksand. Oh. Yeah. So they right all do the die. Well, the two, one couple does so okay. far. It's a three issue miniseries. So three or four issues. Okay, so it's not an anthology. No, no, no. Okay. It's a three issue miniseries. So. Um, and it's it's yeah I enjoy it it's, it's pretty good I've enjoyed this first issue. So. This scope I'm telling you like we we've said it a thousand times I'll say it a thousand times more it's like they're just good stories. Yeah. Like they're, they're not super not, like they're nothing, not like, you're not they're not going to remake the wheel or no anything, they are not they are trying they are not trying to do something crazy they are not trying and they have actually just they're just it's not a stories, Porsche, good characters it's not a Yugo it's yeah. an Acura you're going to get in you're going to turn the key and you're going to you're gonna go yeah. where you want to go and you're going to enjoy it yeah. If in comfort, yeah. Although yeah, no, usually the be art's really good, really fast, or, yeah. Quickly, you know. I really, I, I've really gotten on board in scope a lot. So well, I'm glad you have. Yeah, we, I've I mean, enjoyed it. And I know we, horns, did you give it? Uh, you know what? I'd actually give it probably <laughs> just because of the funniness of it. I'm like three and a half. You know, I mean, it was. It's. I mean, I, it's going to be. <laughs> Cliched, I'm sure it already is, but you know what? It's, Again, it's a fun cliche. The scope doesn't try to reinvent yeah, the wheel. No, exactly. They're just going to do a story. It's going to yeah. be a good story. And so the last one I'm going to review is Tommy Gun Wizards, uh, written by Christian oh Ward. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's by Dark Horse. Gonna... It's Dark Horse. Oh, Dark Horse. I was thinking okay. about that was one of the ones I was considering. Uh, that kind of this week number one? Mm -hmm. okay. That was number two. Number two. Oh, okay. So this is, yeah, Final number two. Al Capone with Christian magic. Ward. Yeah. Uh, the artist is Sammy Cavella, and Christian Ward also does some of the art. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it is like a, it's a Al Capone and what's the good guy? Uh, Elliot Ness. Ness. Elliot Ness, right. So it's Ness and Capone. So Ness has got his group and Capone's got his group. Uh, Capone's group is mostly magic users and like the, the evil people and then of course, Ness is, um, they've got, they're kind of like, they've all got their little, like, whatever their character thing is, you know, one's like a Scottish guy, one's like the, the rough and tumble guy, one's like the guy that's, uh, he's... So, like the untouchables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But they all got, like, the little magic. secrets, like, one's using Lick, which is like a drug that they can have magic with, and then one's like, one's a closeted homosexual, one's a, you know, something or other. They are like the... sheep, you know. Yeah, saying. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Hey, you've read this. <laughs> So it starts off with the woman in red, who is kind of a villain. She's kind of like the one becoming uh, one of the main villains uh, of the book that's with Capone. And uh, she goes back, and she, you find out that her and Ness are actually kind of friends, and that uh, or that they knew each other, and that she was the one that introduced Ness into to the lick to the magic potion stuff. And then it cuts to them, uh, the uh, Untouchables, kind of group uh, fighting. These uh, um, finding the bad guys. All of a sudden, Elliot Ness. They're like, "Where's Where's Ness at?" And he like drives like a big giant motorcycle through the stained glass window, shoots everybody up, and he's like, you know, stops everybody and saves the priest. Well, they find out that the priest is actually like the guy that Capone confessed to. So they're going. They're like, "Okay, well, we we need to know what he's confessed to." And he's like, "Oh, he's like, okay, I'll help you." And all of a sudden, Capone appears like in the stained glass. 
And so he comes like, oh, you're not going to stop me. So he sends in like his kind of uh, band of, uh, of, of uh, villains and they all have like their little magic things and they go through, like they introduce them. One guy uses Lick to, um, to ignite his, py- he's a pyromaniac, so his head's on fire. So he like shoots these flames at him. One guy has all these tattoos of snakes that come alive and, and attack. Uh, one guy's like this, he gets like bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then um, they all kind of start trying to fight. Well, Ness ends up, uh, oh, the other one's like kind of a, a red wizard. He's, he's kind of a magic user anyways. And then kind of find out Ness, uh, Ness is actually still using Lick. And so he's doing it in secret, but he like, he stops, the, he goes around and stops each of, a, each of the bad guys with his magic. And then they find their way, you know, to uh, stop each of them at the end. And then the priest is getting ready to confess to everybody. But the white wizard, who was in the last issue as a bad guy, shows up and puts his hand, like, sh- just, like, jabs his hand through the priest's chest. So, then, of course, that, that avenue's dead. Um, but at the end, they uh, you, Ness uses his magic to revive the dead body of the priest. And he the, the priest is going to start telling him all the secrets. And then you find out that actually the red the red lady the lady in the red suit is like she's kind of like the big big bad and she's following this kind of toad god that is helping her uh, with magic and and that's how they're kind of getting a lot of the the uh, magic stuff that the lick out in the streets so it's hmm. really kind of a crime novel slash magic slash old time like uh you know. what's well, funny you mentioned that it's a frog god you know because yeah. over in like arizona and all that they have the, the magic frogs you can lick yeah that's kind of what yeah. they make it okay. out like, like okay. he's like this oozing god that just like okay. they use all of his like hmm. all this extra ooze to make a make this magic ooze, stuff huh? so it's really ooze. good i really liked it the first one was kind of interesting the second one's gotten way better i really liked the magic battle and that was kind of cool I, I'm interested to see where they're going to go with this. Like how, I don't know how much longer it can go, but I definitely think it can go a lot longer. Like this is it a dark horse? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if it's going to be a miniseries or I remember, I remember or what. seeing it in the solicitations thinking it sounded pretty interesting, but I, I just didn't order it. So with Dark Horse, more than some of these smaller companies, you're, they've got enough resources that it probably won't stop midway. That they'll... That they'll see it through. Yeah, unless yeah. you're Shadow Blast. Remember that a few years ago, the book Shadow Blast, a lot of us were reading. It got to three issues and they stopped. Maybe or the they end league yeah. where they got the three well, issues and they big. didn't stop. Yeah. <laughs> and they should have. We're still bitter. Aww. We're looking at you, end league. That's okay. You gave oh, it three yeah. issues. I gave it one issue. Or it was it 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 could have been the greatest book ever, and then it wasn't no, the <laughs> first three issues were just amazing and then there was a lapse and then when it came back it was it was a different book completely right. for it Aww. so how many unicorns would you give uh, I actually uh, give it probably four and a half like yeah. I actually really enjoyed it like I, like I said the art's kind of interesting it kind of well, so that's two books you mentioned it. that I actually may have to go back and check out so yeah. that's that's cool like I said that was one that I was thinking about for this week. Right. So. Well, I ended up reading like 23 issues this week, so I read a lot of stuff. I know. I read a lot. I read like four or five a night. But did you read Amazing Spider-Man this week? I did not. A lot. I read, I honestly, the, the ones I read digitally are always usually a lot more or less mainstream. Like, I mean, obviously, like, Infested Earth is not a mainstream book. I read uh, Relics of Youth. That was interesting, but it Relics was... Relics of Youth? Yeah, I read it. I don't know what they're going to do with it's, that. Like, I mean, it's just like you're supposed to... There again, it's just... It's, it's like, like a not, lost... Not information, but... Right. You know, you're like, okay. It's like these all these strangers. One guy has cancer. One girl's a, a, a like kind of a prima donna. One girl's... A, one guy's like a child rich guy. Yeah, one, one girl's, girl's a, one child, girl's a, a child tattoo. actress. Yeah. yeah. And so, like, it, yeah. And then they're all, like, got these tattoos that are leading them on this adventure to this island. And yeah, they don't then know each other. They're supposed to be all the same dream. It's yeah. weird. But I... I don't know. Like I, I'm gonna pick up number two just to see what's gonna happen. But yeah. Um. But like it's like see uh Sierra the Royal Stars, the Mall. I read the Mall number two. Um, did you read the plot? I did read the mm-hmm. plot. It was um. Did it have a plot? <laughs> I'm done with you. Uh. It's it's um. It was good, but it was more <laughs> like the. Oh, it had the homage. That does not. Yeah. Well, no, it's it's this guy's uh, 
this guy dies and his he and his wife die and his kids are left to his brother who you kind of get the idea that uh, didn't really want anything to do with the family he was kind of a dropout kind of deadbeat but he was a successful deadbeat kind of thing who's left left the town and everything that end up going back and to the old old town of where they were from and kind of getting the Nothing. I was just gonna say like there's another one I read that was like really weird, but it was by Image. It's called Safe Sex. Yeah, no. Uh, but no, I, 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 I would check it's out. Not plot. weird. <laughs> no, I would check plot out. Weird. Here. I mean, it, it was one of those things that I picked it up for the, the homage cover. Homage cover. Right. Same here. And then see if it's any good. Yeah, I mean, it's. I, I think it has potential. It really does. Uh, I need All to, right, we're gonna have to wrap Sarah. it up before Terry. Yeah, yeah I'm about to fall asleep. Terry, <laughs> what do you mean about to fall asleep? You you fall asleep like eight Terry, times. Yeah, I know. Dallas bore me. So we're gonna wrap it up. Face bores me. Thanks for another watching another episode. We will, um, if you can, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the bell, um, and we will hopefully see you next week with your pull list being full. Bye. Bye. Bye.